Greetings and welcome to the latest video, the first video in quite a while. It has been a while. I've taken a bit of time off um, for various reasons, personal, whatever. Um, we don't really need to get into the specifics of that. But long story short, I've been away for a while, for a number of months. But here I am. I am back. I'm looking to make a comeback. So I thought what better way to come back than to do a garage update video and show you what I am working on, what I I am going to be working on in the future because I do have a number of things built up, uh, ready to go in some cases, some things that are needing a bit of work. It's all fun, it's all exciting, taking the car to a new level and going to have a bunch of fun next year and yeah, hopefully you will be along for the ride. So without further ado, let's get into what is going on in the garage, what I'm working on. Let's go. All right then, one thing that I'm looking at is this, or I should say these, as there are two of them. Um, these are the trailing arms, and um, specifically the reason that I have these off is to look at doing some upgrade work, um, some refurbishment work. You know, the black paint or powder coat or whatever was, you know, getting into a slightly rough sort of shape. Uh, a wee little bits of surface rust poking through that you can kind of see around where the bushing was. Um, and that is another point as well, upgrading the bushing. Um, I have removed these and I actually put a brand new set of trailing arms that come with a brand new bushing into the car so that I could work on these and not have any downtime in the car but ultimately the plan is to get these fixed up sorted out upgraded looking great working great and then to do another swap back in without any downtime once again as you can see i've already removed the bushings uh, from both of these um uh, that was a right pain they are really really well in there um and whilst i was doing that um, i also noticed uh, quite an interesting point in the construction of these um so if i flip this around so you can see the circular part here where the bushing goes on this side, you can see that that is welded all the way around, but then if you flip it over, this side actually has no welding whatsoever. You can actually see a bit of a gap there. See, so yeah, the part that is holding the bushing is only welded on one side, um, and that is what this other one is currently in the process of getting sorted here, uh, the one that is in the vise. Uh, what I decided to do whilst I had these out and I was, you know, refurbishing them, putting the nice new bushings in, I thought I would do a little bit of um, welding work here just to reinforce this area. Um, so obviously on this one, um, that side is the side that already had the weld, and this side, uh, you can see I have welded this up. Um, not the most pretty welding job ever, I'm sure you'll agree. But ultimately, you know, I'm not an expert at welding, um, but it will be good and functional. And once we get it all painted, it'll look decent. So this one is actually ready to be coated again. Um, this other one, I do need to do the welding work. I need to just sort of um, grind off a bit here, make the surfaces nice and clean, and then get the welding done, and then bring it up basically to the point where this one is at. And then once all that is done, we will be ready for some new bushings. And speaking of the new bushings, if I flip over here, um, these are what are going to be going in. Powerflex, naturally. Um, these are the PFR 19-812 for focus rear trailing arm blade bush. So if I pull one of these... Oh, just really beautifully constructed. Uh, much nicer, I would say, than the stock one. You can see that there's like this lip, so, you know... Once it's in the appropriate amount, that lip will stop it going any further. Um, so yeah, we just need to squeeze those in. Um, you can see massive, solid polyurethane bushing in there, in where the blade is in the middle. Um, by comparison, the stock one has like holes in it, and of course it's made of rubber, um, so the stock one is a lot more compliant and squishy, and it does break down over time, which is the reason why I'm doing this. Um, I did actually start doing this probably almost a year ago, um, 
um, and then I kind of just put a pause on it. But yeah, I'm getting to it now, and yeah, it'll be a great job. It's gonna look, I think, pretty awesome, and it's gonna function really nicely and be a nice upgrade. Once we get the PowerFlex bushings in, once we get the refurb work done on the actual trailing arms, it's gonna be awesome, and yeah, we'll get to that. Um, I'm obviously not gonna finish it today, just giving a bit of an update on it, but that is one of the things that is incoming. Alrighty, so I did a bit of rust treatment just on the inside there. That's all dry now and we are ready to insert our bushings. Well, here we are then, I've got one in finally. Um, I must say it really was not easy to get in there, it was actually a bit of a pain to be honest. Um, but I was somewhat determined not to use the little like sachet of lube that they give you. I'll just set this down here and show you. They, they give you this here, like grease, PTFE, silicone bush assembly grease. Um, but the thing about this is, I am pretty sure um, it would not be appropriate to use this uh, to get our bushing like mounted into the arm uh, because the the bushing inside the like the provided like metal like housing thing fair enough that can like rotate and stuff but the metal and metal i.e the metal casing of the bushing assembly and the arm that should not be rotating once that's in the car and if you like lube it up with a ton of grease um you could get like movement whenever you're in operation and that would be a bad thing um so i think you know I mean, I assume they provide this, you know, in some weird case where you take the bushing out of, like, you know, the sort of, the, you know, the zinky coated metal thing. But, you know, ultimately, you're not going to be doing that. I don't know why. Um, so I, I think it would have been wrong to use this just to make life a bit easier to get this into the uh, trailing arm. Um, I think, you know, it, it really was the best thing just to kind of suck it up, um, you know, go and go through the pain of getting it in there. It's obviously super duper tight, as I believe it should be. Um, so yeah, anyway, <laughs> that is one down. Uh, the other one still has to be done, and then I need to uh, just tape up the bushings, and then, you know, do the rest of the refinish work on the arms, and then they will be ready to be reinstalled, all nice and upgraded. Um, but yeah, yeah, um, that'll be for another day. Uh, let's move on to something else. So I got a random bit of warm weather, so I got a bit of spraying done. Um, I got that one pretty much done, this one's just primed, um, but now the weather has sort of gone cold again, so uh, this is sort of on pause. Um, but there are a bunch of other things that I want to cover in today's garage update video. There are other things that I have in the pipeline, and a lot of them are still in boxes. So I have this thing, uh, which is probably gonna actually be the next mod video that is upcoming, so make Make sure you're subscribed for that. I'll give you a little bit of a sneak preview if I can see in here. Let's see. Oh, it's red and it's it's made of metal and it's quite large. So I'll let you try and guess what that might be. Um, I do then have a bunch of other like stuff upcoming. Carbon fiber is going to be a returning theme. This box right here is a quite a large carbon piece. Um, I've got bits of carbon from multiple manufacturers, including this right here. This is, as you can see, from Sebon. Um, I've got another piece up uh, there. I think this box right, no, sorry, this box right here is another carbon piece that I haven't got done yet. Um, but yeah, bunch of carbon stuff. Other stuff to note, I have a couple of radium boxes here. Um, so I will let you speculate as to what those could be. And I also, I'm going to be redoing my intake as well. Um, can you see Mishimoto? Um, yeah, that's gonna be an interesting one. It's not gonna go on as is. This is just how it came in the delivery, um, but it's going to look a bit different from this, but that again will be another video for another day. Um, just a little preview for you right here. Okay, uh, continuing the theme from the rear trailing arms and doing a refurb upgrade job all at once, um, you can see I have another piece. So this is one of the front wishbones. This obviously isn't a new piece. This also is not from my RS. I got this from a breaker um, and it's, pro well, it's probably in a similar kind of condition to mine. You know, mostly okay with a bit of surface rust and kind of and bushings that could really do 
worth a bit of looking at um, especially the ball joint here and this one is like totally just nothing my plan is to remove and replace and indeed upgrade all three consumable parts and then do a similar refurb that I've been working on on the trailing arms on the wishbone itself so the parts that are going to be replacing this you can get parts from various different manufacturers various different places um, you can get um, all three from hard race you can get these two bits from powerflex i'm pretty sure the only company that does an aftermarket uprated ball joint is hard race though um, so if you're going to be replacing this um, you either have to go hard race or you have to just go for like an oem ford part but yeah it's going to be an interesting one these are the replacement bits right here um, it's going to be interesting because i am doing a mix of three different manufacturers of course as i was just talking about the ball joint is going to be hard race um, so you can see the model number there it does say Kuga but please do take my word for it this is 100% the correct part for the RS um, you can probably pop this open and have a wee look at it So yeah, super duper nice. These bolt on, they come with all the hardware that you need, of course, uh, which is a bit different to the stock piece. Um, so if I flip this, if you just look at it, look at it this side, and also then look at it on the other side, uh, this is going to have to be drilled out because these are kind of like sort of, you know, pressed rivet type things. Um, they aren't really designed to be easily replaced. Um, so we basically have to drill these out get rid of the old thing and then we will be bolting the nice new hard race ones in in their place and they will be lovely then for this little small bushing right here um, we're going power flex so we've got front wishbone front bush uh, the PFF 19-8011 probably uh, pop that open and have a wee look see so these are like two parts they sort of like you know, so we'll smush in either side, and then there is the metal bit that goes up in yep, up the middle there. So, uprated, brand new, gotta be real, real nice. And then you can clearly see this other box right here, it says white line, and that is because <laughs> this part is white line. Uh, these are super nice, actually. So look at that, a uh, big chunk, single piece aluminium, anodized to this sort of goldy color, pre-installed low compliance bushing uh, to replace this very tired looking stock bit. Uh, this is thicker, as you can see, um, versus like just this sort of stamped metal bit. Um, so it's gonna be like stronger, it's gonna look better, and it's also relatively light because it is aluminium. So yeah, those are all of the replacement bits that are going to be going into the arm here. Obviously there are, you know, two of each for both arms. Um, this is just one, uh, but we do need to get all of these old bushings and what have you out and off of this and that is going to be the next stage okay so i'm going to start off with the big one right here so um the way that this is on essentially the end of the arm of the wishbone it goes all the way through that's it right there and it goes through the middle of the bushing the bushing kind of just compresses on um so to get this off i have a special tool um that is this right here um this is specifically for or pulling bushings like this. So the way that this works then, we adjust these legs. Um, you can see that they have little bolts on the end there and we adjust them to fit over the lip just over the lip of the metal part of the bushing setup and then we get that nice and tight and then you can kind of see the central bit um, is pointing at the end of the wishbone arm so we basically screw this in and that will make contact so the idea is that as you keep screwing this inward uh, it's going to basically push the arm away from the bushing um, and that's kind of it that's the whole idea well there we are then finally got this off it was a bit of a pain to get off i will admit uh, quite a lot of work and 
uh, yeah, just to get that off of there. But as you can see, obviously it is off, so that is one out of the three parts done. And uh, next, I'm going to move on to this bit. So I've got my big clamp from my set um, for removing bushes. It just so happens that the hole at the end of the clamp is the exact size I need it to be uh, for pushing out the metal middle part of this bushing. Um, and that's what I'm basically going to do first. And also I don't even need any extra wee bit here to push through. I can just use the clamp and that is it. All right, well, there we are. That is this bushing out. Um, as is becoming a bit of a theme with this, it was a decent bit more hassle and effort to get that out. But yeah, the next thing then is to move on to the last part, which is getting this old crappy ball joint off. And um, so like I mentioned before, we're gonna be drilling this out. I'm gonna start off small. Um, I've got a little one here, a little drill bit. This is a three and a half mil, I think. So yes, just flipped it around there because on the underside, the bottom side, you can see these little dimples. And I'm starting off with this three and a half because it seems like a pretty decent size uh, to go into those dimples. And we want to just drill straight through and then sort of open the bore out, open it up with bigger drill bits, uh, which I will do. I'm using cobalt containing HSS drill bits because I think they're good. They don't blunt so easily as regular ones. Uh, so that's cool. So yeah, I will get to that now. Okay, there there we go then, that is all three out. That is what they look like whenever you drill them through and then yank them out and then this is what you're left with. This is the old ball joint of course, which our nice new hard race item is going to replace. Just grab that again. You can see it's just, I mean the same sort of thing, but nice and new. And yeah, I mean that actually wasn't terrible as long as you've got like, you know, the right size of drill bits and stuff. The maximum width, like the width of these holes right here in the wishbone itself is uh, 10 mil. And then like hammer and chisel like the ends off and pull the old fixings out. And then once you do that, then it just pops right out real easy. Um, so yeah, now it's on to getting this nicely cleaned up and refurbed. All right, so updating you then on where I'm at with this. Um, obviously got the center bit out of here. Um, it was not super easy to get out, but I got it in the end. Eventually the rubber part, I managed to break it and then extract the central part of the bushing. Now, whenever I did that, it did leave the sort of metal ring. It was like, like the jacket of the bushing, which was unbelievably tightly jammed in here um, into this inner bore right here and it was so hard to get out um, I had to like you know just bash it until um, it eventually sort of bent and came out um, but anyway I got it out uh, so we have this nice fresh inner bore which I have um, cleaned up and treated the bit of the surface rust that was on there so that is nice and ready to go with the new PowerFlex bushing. I have also been thinking about the white line bushing, the part that goes up here, the big boy. Um, it has this internal part that goes over um, the metal like spindle thing that is part of the wishbone. So I've got that slid on here um, and then the big part just slides on top of that. Um, that went on reasonably nice and easy and is looking good. Um, so yeah, move on now. I will get this other bushing in, the Powerflex one that I've got. Um, it just, the three parts um, just all squishes together. So there you go, that is the three parts smushed together in the vise and with a little rag just to protect it and using the grease on the inner section, so the little metal bit that goes in between, um, using the grease on that, that's where that is for. Um, pretty simple, um, not too much hassle and yeah, I think that's pretty good progress on this wishbone. Um, it's ready now for this surface to be like properly refinished nicely. Um, I will just leave this for now. I think that's good enough progress. I'm pretty happy with that. I do have some other stuff to go and do. Uh, but yeah, great progress on this. Uh, not too much left to get it um, totally finished and ready to be installed into the car. So moving on then. Okay, so the last thing then for today of this garage update, as you can see, is not actually taking place in the garage. I am, of course, in the car. I am driving, and that is because I am going somewhere, and where I am going is a place called Kotec. Uh, so Kotec are Northern Ireland's, like, number one, maybe their only, um, like, certified Cerakote applicator. So I am going there to get a little bit of work done. So the specifics of that are wheel nuts. So um, 
lo a long time ago at this point, maybe like two, three years ago, I got a set of, I believe, 12 mil spacers, uh, which came with these wheel nuts that had the extended shanks that went through the middle of the spacer, um, so that you didn't have to, you know, bolt the spacer on. So it meant that you can use them with the stock wheels, the stock Ford wheels. Um, now, I still run those wheels in wintertime, and I've just put them on. Whenever I took them off at the end of, like, the season last year to put my summer wheels on, you know, my Revo wheels, um, I noticed that they had started to go, the, this is the nuts, um, they had started to go, like, all rusty and not very nice looking. Um, like, the painted surface is, like, all chipping off and stuff, and it just doesn't look very nice. So, that is what I'm going to get sorted out, because whenever I put the winter wheel setup that I've got on, um, I didn't bother putting the spacers on. Um, because of that so I want to get that sorted out so that I can then use the spacers again um, uh, so I thought to myself well I could get them painted or powder coated or whatever um, but I was really intrigued by Cerakote because it's meant to be like super tough and durable um, so that's why I am going to go and get them done by Andy over at Kotec. I'll flash up here uh, a before of the wheel nuts um, the way they are right now as they are sitting in the back seat of the car um, they are not very nice looking. I mean, they're still functional. It's just a bit of surface rust, um, but the Kotec uh, should be able to sort them right out uh, with a epically durable coating. Um, so obviously, because I haven't got it done, I'm on the way right now. I can't show you the after shot. So yes, I will leave this video here for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And of course, if you have been waiting for this video like a bunch of times since the last one, thank you so much for your patience. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, as I say, I've got a bunch of stuff coming up, a bunch of new mods, a bunch of new videos in the pipeline. So I hope you're subscribed for that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.